G'day, it's Rusty and welcome to part two of this three-part video series where we're installing the new Thermacut SD55 three-phase plasma cutter on the plasma table. In part one you would have seen me do the unboxing of the cutter, show you all the different components that came with it. There was the machine torch, there was the consumables I got, grounding clamp that came with it, um, the air filter, that motor guard filter that came with it as well. So in part two we're going to mount the torch onto the z-axis and what I've done to mount it is as you can see the machine torch so the machine torch has this 35 mil diameter um, body I guess you'd call it so we need to mount that vertically onto the z-axis on the, on the uh, plasma cutter so what I'm going to do is I've cut a piece of 5 mil aluminium plate and I've drawn myself a template so I can transpose these bolt holes and what the bolt holes represent is the four bottom ones are the bolt holes onto the z-axis unit and these other two there and there represent the bolt mounting holes for these block clamps. Now these, I had some smaller ones and I was going to have to machine them out. Well these are a 35mm block clamp and it just so happens that that torch being 35mm these will actually fit around the torch so when I do them up that'll actually hold it tight and I'm going to put two of these on the, on the uh, backing plate and what I'm going to do differently the idea of these block clamps is that the base plate is actually a weld plate and you can weld it on well I've got aluminium so I'm not going to be welding it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill these mount holes out use a longer bolt so that drill that out that becomes a clearance hole and I'm going to drill and tap this aluminium plate to accept the bolts that hold these block clamps in place so I've got to be very careful that I get the torch to be vertical and make sure it's not sort of leaning forward or back so the first thing I've got to do is transpose my bolt holes onto my plate and then I can drill them, the clearance holes for the four bolts onto the z-axis and the other four bolts I'll be drilled and tapped and these are six mil allen head bolts. So the first thing to do is to drill this plate and then we'll be able to remove the old hand torch off the z-axis unit and then bolt this plate on so then we can have a trial fit to see how that fits and I may have to move the whole z-axis unit up and down um, but first things first I'll get these holes drilled. And then once we've mounted the machine torch onto the z-axis, we need to then put another channel on the back of the gantry and also on the side of the frame of the plasma table to accept the drag chain that will support this uh, machine torch cable. Once we've made the channel and run the cable through the drag chain, we then need to uh, connect the CNC connector plug cable from the plasma cutter into my software and I'm using the MyPlasm software and it has its own plasma interface unit and it accepts the CNC cable which has got the torch on off and it also records the arc voltage which is the, the voltage across the gap between the plasma tip and the work surface and then we use that for the torch height control. And then finally, once we've got the machine torch mounted, we've got the cable run in the drag chain, and then we've got the CNC port connected, we'll be able to, in part three of the video series, we'll then be making some test cuts, because we're the current values that I have for my cut chart won't probably won't be relevant for this new machine. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make this uh, mounting plate for the machine torch. Then we'll go on and make the channel for the drag chain, then connect the CNC cable up. And this is the backing plate here, bolted to the Z-axis. This is the unit that drives up and down. The um, block clamps are now bolted through into the threaded holes into here. And that's the way the torch sits. Pretty pleased with that. So this is the drag chain I'll be using for the machine torch cable and what I'm going to do is around the back of the gantry I already have this channel 
for the uh, original drag chain with the motor cables and that in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build another one on the back here and weld the two together and that'll give me enough room to run that second drag chain. And then once I've done the gantry one, we'll need to come around here to this side. As you can see, there's already a drag chain with cables. I've just got to duplicate this and run that one down and that'll be the carrier for the drag chain that takes the machine torch cable down to the machine at the back of the table. And these are these two pieces of aluminium angle I've got just sitting on, a, on the bench. I'm going to just TIG weld them together and that'll make the tray for the uh, drag chain. Now I've got these two separate channels welded together, bolted back onto the gantry. And what I've got to do now is, with the machine torch, this cable has got to come up over around the back. And where the existing mount is here off this junction box with the, uh, the first drag chain, which has got the, the uh, Z-axis motor and the limit switch in it, I've got to put a little bracket out here to hold the second section of um, drag chain. So that's, so uh, I think we'll probably start to assemble it from this end, get all that in and then we can work our way where it comes to the end here. We then got to get around next to this one. This existing one here, I've got to make another mounting bracket. So there's a little bit of mucking about. Then I've got to extend or make another channel next to this one to put that other drag chain in. So I'll start at this end We'll get this all installed, make a little bracket, get the cable in and then we can sort of tidy one end off and then work towards getting it to the other end. Now the drag chain for the machine torch has been installed and I've got a bracket here that supports it underneath and that chain runs down next to the existing one, comes down here to the end and what I've got now is I've got a bracket off this first one and this will be where the second drag chain will come down next to this one. And now I've got to uh, duplicate this channel and make another one. And the rest of the machine torch cable can run in there. So I'll just show you how that looks from the other side. Yeah, so there's those two chains in their respective little channels. And yeah, that looks really, really good. Still not sure whether I need to support this or not. I'm just unsure about whether this cable here needs a support, but I do have some mounting points here on the side of the Z if I wanted to put some sort of plate up and hold that, but not sure yet, but at this stage, really pleased with the way that's progressing. And now I've uh, completed the second half of the drag chain install. What I did is I welded another piece of, two pieces of angle line together to make this second channel. Uh, where are we? This second channel here. And that runs along next to the first one. And I've put another bracket in here and then that tips down because down here somewhere will be the new cutter. And at the moment the cable is just hanging down on the floor. So there's the second drag chain install, which is, I should have done this before, but. So this is the second uh, drag chain part of it which is for the uh, machine torch so we're very close I need to make a little bracket off here for the striker plate for this is the z-axis homing proximity switch so when this torch travels up this is its upper limit and I've just got to make a little bracket I'll use these two bolts here put a little some sort of bracket out here with a little tab on it so it lines up with that switch so, yeah, we're getting very close. And here is this striker plate for the Z-axis upper limit. So it's just a piece of 30 by 30 angle. Uh, bent the end back. And I've just set the gap at about 
three mil there and I'll test that very shortly. So that's one more job we've done that we could tick off the list. So I've connected the torch cable into the machine and as I mentioned earlier, this has got this sort of self-locking clip that when you put the torch, I guess uh, plug, whatever you call it, into here, this finger locks into place. The work clamp, which is this um, connector here that goes into the machine, that runs around to, it goes around to this common plate that I've got, and from there, I've got a magnetic lead, I've got an alligator clip, and I've also got a cable that comes up to the side of the water bath. So I've got this one here, connect to the water bath. I've got my uh, lead here. and So when I'm cutting aluminium, I use this uh, clamp onto the metal, and I've also got this uh, magnetic clamp here, so I put that on the sheet. So I've got a good return path back to the cutter. I've also got the air line connected into here, and this last connector this one here this is the CNC port that connects to my software to tell this cutter to turn on and off and also it measures the arc voltage uh, so I can use the torch height controls that's what this is so if I turn it on I'm ready to turn it on um, switch at the back let me flick that switch at the back That noise you can hear that air there is a 10 second purge on the machine and that's just to clear the the torch apparently now that'll stay up there this adjustment knob is for the current setting and I can wind it from 30 to 55 and there's a couple of different selection options that light apparently means that there's power on it there's an over temperature alarm here and I also had this without the air pressure this one here lights up this is a switch for cutting or grid cutting I'm going to be using the top one so we are ready to go so I'm, I'm pleased with the way the installs happen at the moment the cutter is sitting out the back I'm not sure how I'm going to mount this one the other one was tucked under the table and it got a bit of moisture stuff splashed on it at times so I'll probably go a different way um, but I'm just not sure where I'm going to put it yet. I've got a fair bit of excess cable here, so I have considered putting it up on this back wall, but I'm just not sure yet. So, so anyway, that's, that's where we're at with the install. It's, we're actually finished the install, and I think we're ready to cut. So there was one final thing I needed to do before we wrap this video up, and I did it off camera because I didn't want to bore you with all the mucking about, but I needed to ensure that this torch was, was level up and down and also it wasn't leaning forward or back um, it was leaning a little bit over so where this mounting plate attaches to his mate which runs on the linear rails and the, the, the uh, bearings I was able to just loosen those bolts and move it so we had a square on both sides and I've got it dead square the torch from the from the top to bottom is actually leaning it's leaning a little bit out at the top and the difference between the top and the bottom was about 0.6 of a millimetre. Now that doesn't sound like much, it's about 20 thou. So what I'll need to do is, I'll need to put some, a, a, a packer underneath or behind this bottom block. So I'll just bring the torch back out a bit. So I don't have any thin shim, so I'll need to get myself some. So in the meantime, I'm okay with it being as it is, but I do want to get it just a, a little bit squarer. So we've reached the point of... We've reached the end of this part two. I'm, I'm pleased that we've got it here. And uh, if you can stick around for part three, part three is where we're actually going to, we've got to put the correct tips and nozzles and electrodes in the torch tip. Uh, and then we're going to check the cut chart for the, uh, the Thermocut SD55. And we're going to then set it up and we're going to put some steel and we're going to cut a couple of things out and just check how that cut looks. So. That'll be part three coming up shortly. So if you have any questions or queries about this video, please put them in the comments below. I'll certainly get to all of them. If you like the video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If there's something you don't like about the video and you give it a thumbs down, I really would appreciate you writing in the comments what it was you didn't like 
because I'm always trying to make better content. So uh, I appreciate you doing that for me. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, the subscribe button is down here. And if you'd like to support the channel, there's a link in the description below to buy me a coffee. I do appreciate all the help I get. So that's it for this video. And I hope you can stick around for part three where we'll be lighting this up and, and cutting some new stuff with this new Thermacut SD55 plasma cutter.